Hello, everyone. Welcome to season number four. Today's episode number four of the Global Radio Ideas webinar series. My name is Ken Benson from P1 Media Group and joining us from Germany. He's back after illness. Uh, welcome back, the CEO from Benstown, Andy Sandeman. Hey, guys. Nice to see you. Nice to have you back again. Nice to have me back again, like with some technical difficulties. I hope <laughs> it's working. Sick and all the difficulties. Happy to be here today. All right. Today's webinar is called How One Programmer Conquered San Diego. And he didn't stop there. He went on to conquer the world and now has created a nation. So lots to talk about. Uh, the chat box is activated. Let us know where you're watching. And if you have a question, please post it there anytime. We'll get to those later in the program today. Uh, so let's tell you about our guest. He cut his teeth playing hip hop on AM radio in his hometown of Tucson, Arizona. Quickly became the music director and eventually a program director of another station, an FM station in uh, Tucson, the legendary CHR KRQ. And after many years in Tucson, he made an incredible leap and was named the program director of Hot 92.3 in Los Angeles. Today, he hosts the syndicated program Sunday Night Slow Jam, which airs on over 200 stations worldwide. He even pitched the program once to Mark Cuban and the crew on TV Shark Tank. He's an author and has written several books, including Go Syndicate Yourself, From Local to National, Six Steps and Countless Secrets to Radio Syndication. And since 2011, he served as the director of programming for two of San Diego's most prominent and successful radio stations, CHR Z90 and top rated Rhythmic AC Magic 92.5. When he's not working his day jobs, and there's many of them, he's a self-proclaimed taco inspector a global traveler like few, and the sultan of a micro country, which has been making worldwide news the past uh, 10 days or so. We'll be talking about that. You may have seen him on a guest, on a, as a guest, as a recent uh, guest, rather, on the Kelly Clarkson show on CNN. And again, people around the world have been reading about this guy and hearing about him on radio, TV, social, and newspapers around the world from San Diego, California. Actually, I think he's in L.A. doing press today. Uh, please welcome our dub. I'm, I'm in slow jam stand. Can you can you not see the camera? <laughs> <laughs> it's a green screen. <laughs> yeah. Fake it until you make it. Dub, thanks for being here, man. So good to see you. Um, after a quick uh, FaceTime yesterday night in a different outfit. Um, before we jump on and, and reveal some of your secrets, how you conquered San Diego, the world, created your own nation, uh, maybe you tell us by tell us something people don't know about you. I mean, you've been pretty vocal about your traveling and everything, but it'd be really interesting to hear something that people have not heard about you. Sure. Well, um, I mean, probably the biggest thing again, I've, I've, maybe a lot of people don't know. Um, I have seen every. I've been blessed and lucky enough to see every single country in the world. And it's funny, we've had, had some recent press, and uh, when the press talks about, hey, this guy's been every country in the world, the first. Uh, a uh, comment from a lot of people who don't know me is, well, he, he hasn't been to North Korea. Uh, there's no way this guy's been to North Korea. So all 193 countries, and yes, North Korea, and, and not just the border, but actually three nights in, in Pyongyang. Uh, it's very common that tourists can go to the border, the DMZ, and kind of step across the line and say, okay, I've been to North Korea. But uh, no, three awesome nights in Pyongyang, North Korea, in a bugged hotel room where they could hear everything that I was saying. Um, so that's kind of the the fun fact that a lot of people don't know. Well, congratulations for getting out alive. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, I remember that uh, it was kind of like the time, the same time the American guy got arrested, like a couple of months afterwards, right? I mean, I remember me and uh, our dear friend Sean. She was talking about that, like uh, you making the travel there, and we got all like freaked out. You you you're gonna go there, so I remember that. I, by the way, I want to thank everyone for joining us, guys. Thank you so much for, for jumping on this webinar. I think we're going to have some fun. Uh, they begged me not to go. Friends said, please do not go. Uh, I didn't listen. I didn't tell my mom I was going until I, until I got home. She's like, I'm sorry. I was showing her the slideshow. And she goes, that's not South Korea. I go, yeah, no, it's not. Um, so, yeah, it's, wow. it was great to, be, great to be back out alive. And it gave, me a, it gave me a thirst to continue to go places that I shouldn't go 
Um, unfortunately, that's that's my vice, and that's one of my highs in life is to go places you shouldn't go. So Libya, South Sudan, Venezuela. Uh, I just got back from Syria, which was absolutely amazing. Um, I have a travel blog. You can see all the info there at, uh, at ramblinrandy.com if you want to see the travel blog for more. Well, congratulations. Uh, what an amazing achievement that so few have done. And, uh, you know, I know since we've known each other a long time, I've heard a, a lot of the stories. And uh, I certainly recommend you, you check out his blog if you have any interest in global travel or if you're going to a, a country, just see what our dub's experience was and what he said about it and recommends because uh, it's an incredible planet we live on with so many amazing cultures to see and experience. So um, thanks. So want to move on. You wrote a book called Go Syndicate Yourself. And as we said in the intro, you actually host a program called Sunday Night Slow Jams. So the book is called Syndicate Yourself, Go Local to National. And one piece of advice you offer in the opening paragraph I want to touch on, because I think it sets the stage for everything that's transpired the last 10 days or so in your life. Quote, the only way to truly win in this business is to actually make waves, big ones at that, and to make them often. Obviously, you're making enormous waves now. Tell us about how and why you created the nation Slow Jamistan and what that all means and, and what's happened since CNN picked up the story. But by the way, just touching on the book quickly, uh, if anyone listening uh, either wants to get syndicated or has staff that has visions of being syndicated in the very beginning, of course, before join, joining Benstown, um, I, I was completely on my own. I didn't know anything. And it was it was um, uh, it was. Uh, trial by fire, I think is the term. It was just uh, making a million mistakes and finding out what worked. And, um, you know, today we're on over 200 radio stations. And uh, I, I would often get calls from jocks and even PDs saying, hey, how do I syndicate my show? And I was having four hour discussions on the phone, kind of giving them all the steps. So I said, you know what, let me just let me just write all these steps down. So literally the book is an A to Z step one through six on how to syndicate basically any show. And you got to remember that be, having your show syndicated, that could mean two stations. That doesn't mean 200 stations. So if you love the show you're doing, if you may be doing a Sunday morning bluegrass show, if you want to syndicate it, I really think the book will help you. And it helps you in a very clear and defined way. So just a plug on the book, it's available on Amazon, or you can go to go syndicate yourself, uh, com. It's a play on words, go syndicate yourself. So there you go. That's the book plug. <laughs> I mean, uh, okay, Ken, I mean, where were we? Get me back on track. Well, we were talking about um, what's all transpired. You created, you, after you visited every country, as it says on the screen, you created your own. What is it? Why? Why the name? Um, and, and what's happened? I mean, you've been all over the news, all over the world the past 10 days. Just share the story. This is probably the only interview that I'll do out of character. Normally, I have that that suit on with the hat and and a, a very silly accent. Um, but there is a there is a hobby <laughs> called called micro nationalism or micro nations. And to put it to put it briefly, um, it's people who basically have a little bit of land, whether it's forty acres or their backyard, and they basically simply just say, "Hey, it's my own country." Uh, for most people, it's very tongue in cheek. You literally can uh, just put a sign in your yard and say, this is Kentopia or this is Benson land. And it could be Ken, it could be your own country. People can take it as, as far as they want to with maybe a basic Twitter page or make a website. We decided to go big. So I found 11 acres. For me, the, the, the question, why did you do this? Honestly, 100% just a creative outlet. I'm always looking for fun, new things to do. I don't want to say I get bored easily, but I've all, I always, ever since a kid, I've wanted to make things. So we bought 11 acres. We put the sign you're saying, we put the sign out there and we just kind of let it roll and we wanted to see what happened. And the first day it was all over Reddit. And people were saying, oh my God, what is this? You know, are, are people taking over or is this a movie set or what is this? And it just grew and grew and grew and grew. Um, I think uh, I think it was lightning in a bottle when I came home from my 193rd country and someone from CNN wrote an article about uh, about the two uh, with the headline. He ran out of countries, so he made his own. And uh, the past 10 days have been probably the most incredible last 10 days of my life. The story went viral uh, over 90 countries uh, there. You know, Turkey alone, over 50 news outlets in Turkey reporting on this country, um, the New York Post, uh, the Guardian, the Times, 
uh, many TV stations. I was on with the legend John Records Landecker on WGN last night for about 25 minutes. Uh, man, it's been incredible. People recognizing you on the street. Um, a couple of friends of mine, a couple of friends of mine are like, R dub, check your ego, don't get a big head. Um, for me, it's all about gratitude. Something fun that I did and actually invested a lot of money in is now paying off in ways I never dreamed it. So it's been an incredible last week. That's why I'm here in, in Los Angeles. We're doing TV and radio and and we're just having a blast. Awesome. I'm so happy for you, dude. It's Thank crazy. you. So I, I just wonder, man, when when do you ever sleep? I mean, seriously, um, you program Magic in San Diego, one of the most successful stations down there. Uh, Forma is uniquely to San Diego. So let's shift course a little bit back to radio. So tell us a little bit about Magic and, and why it is so successful. Well, the first correction I'll make is, and, and thank you so much for the compliments, but uh, I think the title is, you know, how – how I or how R-Dub conquered San Diego, man, it, it is such a team effort. And I know that's a, a cliche, but I could not have done it without the team in, in San Diego. It's also the, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm able to start my own countries and go visit affiliates for slow jams. We have, we have an incredible team on Magic. I'll give you a little quick tidbit on Magic 92.5. The station was originally, uh, if you wanted to label it, it would originally be a jam and oldies format. So if you're not, if anyone's on here is not familiar with Jam and Oldies, that's Earth, Wind and Fire and um, uh, Cool and the Gang and Zap and Roger. And basically old, it was an old school station. Over the last 10 years, we saw, if, if not all, we saw most old school stations in America disappear, including my old station, Hot in Los Angeles and uh, Kiss 98.7 in San Francisco and dozens of others. Uh, I, I think the problem was those stations did not adapt. Uh, they they uh, they didn't evolve. Um, about 10 years ago, uh, the board of directors for Magic 92.5 were talking about flipping the station. We were our ratings were that low. We were in trouble. We were 15th, 19th place. Um, it would have been very easy to flip the station and fill a hole, go country or do something else. Um, thank goodness our local company um, saw the power of research. And so we spent a little bit of money, not even a lot, but we spent a little bit of money in research. And I can't give any, I, I can't give too many secrets away, um, but we spent the money and we did the research and we fixed the problem. And so we evolved Magic 92.5 into what it is today. And today Magic is a unique format. There is no format like Magic 92.5 for all of the program directors um, on today and, and air personalities, and really anyone on. Um, I would love for you to tune in and listen to us online anytime this week or next week. And just take a listen to Magic 92.5. It's truly, it is truly today a unique station. There's no station like it. Um, I also get calls and emails from uh, colleagues, program directors who want to flip their station to a Magic 92.5 um, format. Uh, but they, they want to do it by simply copying us and using our playlist and not, not doing the research. So doing the research is super important. And we've also doubled down on our, our value of talent. Jagger and Christie have been with us over 20 years in, wow. in the mornings. They are, they are absolute stars. Um, our midday personality, Javier the X-Man, could run for mayor of San Diego and and would win. He's been with us over 25 <laughs> years. Over 25 wow. years. Wow. My direct my That's director so of my director of programming, Joe Lindsay, has been with us almost 30 years. So this the station really hangs their hat and appreciates the value of talent. So it's everything. It's the research, it's the music, uh, it's the talent, and it's the community. And we just don't say community. I mean, we truly are community. It's 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 all of that together. But again, 10 years ago, our board of directors wanted to flip the format and, um, and luckily we, we, we saw value in the legacy of magic. And, um, and now we're one of the, you know, going back and forth between number one and three, uh, 12 plus. Yeah, it's incredible. Wow. So a couple things you stress there is obviously you've got a very unique music format designed for the marketplace. You're very involved in the community and you have longtime heritage personalities and clearly there's been a lot of talk the last couple of weeks about you and what you've been doing, but also the other big conversation that's been happening in radio the last couple of months is about AI and AI generated presenters and personalities. Uh, just any comments on that? How do you feel about AI in this future with radio and is it a replacement for personalities? Could magic be as successful as it is today? 
with AI generated presenters. So specifically for radio, um, you know, look, if I'm speaking candidly, right, which we are today, um, uh, you know, I, I would absolutely use AI in the overnights uh, right now because we, you know, we, we don't have an overnight talent on the stations for obvious reasons. We don't, it's budget, right? And it's overnights. Um, you know, the, the problem I, I see with AI is the same problem with voice tracking where 15, 20 years ago, uh, this, this new uh, technology called voice tracking came out and we were told, we were pr promised by people, no, we're only going to use voice tracking to bring some of the bigger talents into the smaller markets, uh, you know, the, I'll just throw out markets, uh, uh, you know, Fort Wayne, Indiana, or Fort Smith, Arkansas, some of the markets that could never have or could never afford, you know, really good talent because they simply didn't have the revenue. We're going we're gonna to use voice tracking to really make these radio stations better. Uh, I don't need to, to, to tell you the story. That's not what voice tracking is used for. Voice tracking is used now um, to make a ton of Unfortunately, heritage stations sound very homogenized. Um, I'm afraid that, that that will happen with, with AI, right? It sounds great. You can plug it in where you need it. But look what happened with, with voice tracking. I think, we, I think some of the corporate folks uh, and the bean counters took, took advantage of that. Overall, the, uh, the, the big view for AI for me, I just think it's incredibly dangerous for anything creative uh, and, and any artist, whether, whether you're a voiceover artist or you are a graphic artist. I've been guilty of using AI to make graphics for Slow Jamistan and for my radio station. So I've been I've been guilty of abusing that instead of paying an artist a few hundred dollars to to make a rendering. AI scares the crap out of me. And um, yeah. All right, Dub. Well, well, you said you'd be open, honest, and bold. So those were uh, comments right from the gut. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so. Magic 92.5, obviously a very big, successful radio station in San Diego, but you also program a heritage CHR in the market, Z90, which has been around for a long time. And as I think, you know, another hot topic of conversation is young formats. CHR has been struggling. You know, why do you think that is? And, and what would you recommend we do about it? Side note, Tony said, uh, uh, the, is it me or is the website down for Magic? It is actually down embarrassing uh we know about it and we're working on bringing it bringing it back up you know um as every generation uh guys as every generation uh does including my father uh we always think that today's music is horrible right it's every generation would say that <laughs> you know i grew up in the 90s and I, I you know the 90s to me were my favorite type of music especially classic 90s hip-hop hello cool j etc my father would tell me that music's horrible so as i as i you know right we're all getting older. Uh, as I say, you know what? Today's music is horrible. But you know what? I think for the first time in history, it's not just old people saying that. Um, the <laughs> no, well, you know, the, the current music is – It's we've been stuck in the doldrums for, I think, the longest we, we ever have been. It is truly concerning. It's something that only the – the labels and the producers can fix. There's nothing that I can do or you guys can do, or most of us can do on here um, to, to make the music. I mean, they, we, we depend on the producers and the writers. Maybe, and, maybe AI got, maybe AI is going to make better music. You I know, know it's, it's, I agree. It's, it's complicated. Yeah. Music, uh, music is complicated. You know, so look without, again, without giving, you know, secrets away, you can look at our media base. We're doing what uh, many stations are starting to do now, including B96 Chicago, which, you know, you look at B96, one of my favorite stations and one of the legendary top 40 stations for B96 to say, yeah, we're going to start playing a lot more golds now. Um, I'm, I'm proud to say Z90 was kind of one of the one of not the first, but one of the first stations to make that move to to more golds um, and mm -hmm. less currents. Um, you know, we followed a, a couple of stations that were doing that. Uh, but now you see other other top 40 stations doing that. And it's just it's the only thing you can do right now. We've always done uh, top 40 has always done that in the past. When we've been in the doldrums, we've we've ran a little bit more gold. But I've never seen it today where, where top 40 stations are now starting to become, you know, dare I say, teeter, teetering on on gold based. The product's just not out there. Extra, okay. And, and by the way, extra extra ammo. If you're live and local with amazing personalities. I will throw out a plug here. Z90's morning show, Morton. Hey, Morton. One of the most dynamic and new morning shows 
in America. It is a fantastic show, and it is, <clears throat> it's kind of built like a sitcom. There is a plot line, and there are three amazing characters. It is PPM friendly. Here's my shout out. We've made it available now for other stations as well. So again, any, any program directors here, I don't want anyone to replace local talent, but for any program directors here um, running another syndicated show or running Jockless in the morning, listen to, to Hey Morton on, on Z90. Just l- give those guys a half hour and you'll get the show. It's one of the most diverse and dynamic and young morning shows. And, and man, the way they tell a story... Um, phenomenal so we've got a great morning show on z90 and we've made some amazing strides once again by working with folks like both ben's town and p1 really really happy to hear that man thanks i i think also like when i look at c90 what you have always done dub is and this is back to the topic making waves i mean you created fantastic promotions right at c90 so what stayed with me is something called epic 48 so you might give like our, our viewers a little back, background because I think this was one of the most outstanding promotions you guys have ever done done down there. Uh, you know, this is my, my favorite radio promotion ever. Uh, you know, most things in radio are stolen and, and rebranded. <laughs> uh, I, I steal ideas every day. It's what we do. I'm actually really proud that this was our idea. And basically the, the quick rules of this story or this contest is – uh, three three rules for the listener. You must be willing to do anything. Uh, you must be willing to go anywhere. And you must be willing to leave at a moment's notice. That's Epic 48 Hours. And basically, it, it the, the, the basically two or three month long promotion uh, ends at 6 a.m. in the morning where our 10 finalists are basically sitting on their couch at home with their bag packed and ready to go, waiting for a knock at the door from our morning show. And if we knock at the door, grab your bags and your passport and let's go. You don't know what's happening over the next 48 hours. You have no idea where you're going, who you're going to meet, what you're going to do. Uh, A few highlights included being picked up in a a motorcade of Rolls Royces, um, ushered to the San Diego airport, sat in a first class seat on Delta Airlines as we fly nonstop to New York City with Rick Morton, our morning show host, on the intercom, welcoming everybody to flight, uh, you know, 903. Uh, we land at JFK. We get in a helicopter. We go to Manhattan. We're on the Late Late Show, front row. We're on stage with Colbert. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, Rick Morton is telling our two winners, hey, I hope you enjoyed New York, but we got to go back to the airport first class to Casablanca, Morocco, to see Bruno Mars in Morocco, uh, which was phenomenal. Uh, Another highlight, I'm just picking and choosing some of my favorite places. Um, We're on the way home. Uh, It's the end of Epic 48 Hours in our private plane uh, coming home from Austin. We had an amazing time in Austin, but we're coming home and the pilot tells our winners in the back, hey, um, we've got some weather issues. We've got to land and wait the weather out. So we land in this airfield in the middle of Texas, in the middle of nowhere. We're stretching our legs. The pilot out of his back pocket says, wait a minute, today's Super Bowl Sunday. Here's your tickets to Super Bowl. Uh, We usher the winners to Super Bowl. They meet Guy Fieri at the pre-party. Guy Fieri gives them their own branded um, hot sauce or barbecue sauce. Um, They watch the Super Bowl. It was an incredible game. Uh, The game is almost over. They get a tap on the shoulder from security. Security says, follow me. They go down. The winners go down the elevator into the bowels of the arena of the stadium. uh, And the security says, knock on that door. They knock on the door. Lady Gaga opens the freaking door and says, come on in. (laughs) Um, The label and Lady Gaga and management did this for no one. This was not a Lady Gaga meet and greet. This was our two winners meeting Lady Gaga. There are dozens and dozens of more stories about the celebrity encounters. We hung out at Steve Aoki's house. If you look at the center top picture, we met Halsey. We hung out with Ariana Grande. Epic 48 Hours is both basically a super luxury, uh, a crazy destination trip combined with these money cannot buy opportunities, including hanging out with celebrities. And we've done five Epic 48 Hours. You can see the videos on YouTube. Um, and we've seen stations copy us, including Dubai, um, copy Epic 48 Hours. And it's a great, great, great compliment. And, um, man, probably the coolest thing we've ever done at Z90. So how did Dubai measure up? 
Oh, Dubai. Uh, they did. They did. All, they did all right. No, yeah. I don't look. I, look, I'll say no. No one did it as no one did it as well as Z90. These promotions. <laughs> uh, these. These promotions also take years off my life. They stress you out so much because you're moving, 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 moving. And literally, uh, you know, one of the trips was we, you know, we started in Mexico City to see the pyramids. And, okay, that's cool. But then all of a sudden, hey, get back to the airport. We've got tango lessons in seven hours in Argentina. And we rented like a an eight-story mansion uh, in Argentina. And we had a chef come cook the Argentinian steak for us. We did tango lessons. And then we went to the big giant music festival with the gorillas um, in Buenos Aires. So, wow. yeah, fantastic. So promotion, a little bit like Art of Life, I guess. So I think we're, we're like halfway through, Ken, right? So we're still chatting with San Diego's program director, Art of. If you have questions for Art of, um, he'll going to answer your questions in a few minutes after the show. And I think we should shift gears again, Ken, wouldn't you say, and um, yeah. talk a little bit about the Micronation. So, Dub, you created, host, and produce a weekly syndicated radio show heard on over 200 stations worldwide, Sunday night slow jams. Tell us about the show, why the show became kind of like the name for Slow Jamison, like the book, like, like all the crazy stuff like surrounding, surrounding that topic. It's a lot of topics there, but um, I'll, I'll just give you some quick highlights and you tell me where, where you want me to dive in. I started Sunday Night Slow Jams when I was 16 years old, and I uh, spent some time growing up as a kid listening to black radio and urban radio in, in Los Angeles and Chicago in, uh, in Orlando, uh, more commonly known as the Quiet Storm. Um, I was uh, a 13-year-old, uh, very sentimental and, and, and uh, very into, into romance and, and the cute girls in my class. And so I turn on these late night radio programs. I'd hear these love songs and they were, they were speaking to me. Uh, and then the DJ would come on with a super deep thunderous voice and he was talking slow. Uh, it wasn't the morning zoo. It wasn't the zany night guy. It was a, this was the same radio station, but it was completely different at 10 o'clock. It was, it, it was like, it was a different station. And I appreciated that so much. And these DJs and these shows connected with me emotionally so, so very much. I said, I want to do this. I was missing the thunderous voice. I did not, I don't have a big, giant, deep, bassy voice. But at 16 years old, I was given the opportunity to host the Slow Jam show in Tucson, Arizona. And it's, it was just, it was a passion and it was a love. I later became the program director, but I still came in Sunday nights with my crate of CDs. It was still important to me to keep the show going. And uh, years later, um, by coincidence, there were two program directors, different sides of the country that had heard about the show and heard about the ratings. And the syndication happened completely by accident. They simply asked me, hey, our dub do you think we could run your Sunday show in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Is there a way to do that? And I just got excited saying, man, I, I would actually be nationally syndicated if I got this show on one on one other station. That's what we talk about in the book. You could be syndicated by being on simply two stations. That means you're syndicated. And so Tulsa took the show and I was doing it out of, out of my house. I was mailing them the physical CDs uh, every single week. Uh, the numbers translated. We went from you know 15th place in Tulsa to number one. I, I didn't know wow. if a I didn't know if a Tucson based station would translate to an audience in Tulsa, which is a different demographic. Uh, myself, before being signed uh, to a syndication company, I got up to 27 stations. And Anchorage was Anchorage, Alaska was our sixth station, and to this day, one of the highest ratings of 54 share wow. uh, in Anchorage. And I told myself, man, if this thing works in Alaska, uh, maybe it could work anywhere. <laughs> And that, that was the defining station. And look, I got up to 27 stations. And, you know, one thing we could talk about is investing in yourself and spending money. I had friends at the time saying, I can't believe you're not charging stations uh, to mail the show to you. And I can't believe you're not you're not charging people. And I and I was I, I still am in the business senses. If you believe in your product and you're and you're new at it, give it out for free. Spend your money. It w it will return if you're pro if your product is worthy. So finally, after 27 stations and imagine sending out 27 FedEx envelopes, you know, overnight, every Monday morning as a, as a program director in Tucson, Arizona, I, I couldn't afford that, but I made it happen. Um, and then I finally got signed to a syndication company and, and the rest is history. 
So that's the show. That's the background on the show. And by the way, it's available in, in many different formats. In hot AC now, we have a pop version. So for people to think this is only an urban show or only a rhythmic show, we're on some of the widest markets in Wyoming and South Dakota and um, you know Virginia. We're on some of the the most urban stations in the South. We have an urban version and we have a hot AC version that our flagship is WNEW in New York City with Jim Ryan. So we have formats for everybody. That's the plug. Contact Benstown if you'd like the demo. Uh, would love to be a part of your radio station. And it's, it's, a, it's a show that connects with people. You, you tune in on the show. It's not about me. It's about these callers calling in. It's a and I, Delilah is one of my one of my mentors. It's an it's a younger version, I believe, a younger, hipper version of of Delilah. Fantastic. So that's the show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Over two hundred affiliates now, and in many countries around the world as well. So uh, from zero to several hundred. Um, Hero. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> so listen, we we talked about the two incredible radio brands you built in San Diego. Uh, it's just, you know, you mentioned a little bit about research. How important is research in the brand building process? You know, I, I believe, not for us, but for every station, I believe research is not just important, but is essential. And again, I get calls from GM, GMs wanting to do what Magic is doing. And I, I put the stop sign up. I go, look, you're in a different, you're not in San Diego. Uh, you you can try to copy what we do, but you yeah. you've got to do the research. And the biggest thing is, you know, going back to investment. I think I think GMs and radio stations, rightly so, it's a tough time for the industry. So to spend, you know, uh, thousands of dollars on on research, that's that's daunting to a lot of companies. But what you need to see is the return on investment. And there is always an ROI. There is always a return on an investment when you do research. Otherwise, you're simply guessing and you can be the most talented program director ever, but you are simply guessing. And so uh, research is it, it, it's essential. It's do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. If you truly um, vision envision success for your station, you have to spend the money in research and not just not just a library test, but perceptually, you know, the library, we do a library test for execution, but we do a strategic test for the strategy and for the, for the roadmap of the radio station. And the two connect so well, and you really, you kind of can't have one without the other. You can do a library test, but okay, well, what are you going to do with it? Um, you know, as far as Matt, both magic and Z90, we do the strategic first that gives us the overall roadmap. And then once we have that, we do the music test, we plug that in, and that's why you're seeing the success from both Magic and Z90, though. Yeah, it's a great point. Yeah, I, think it's, up. Yeah. I always said, too, when I was programming and when I started off in small markets, I had no research tools. But as I moved up, I had more and more. And I always said, in truth, I was more successful with it than without it. And uh, now that I'm programming again, we, we've done a little bit of research to aid our instinct. And uh, we just had a fantastic month. So I think... Uh, I certainly agree with what you're saying and have been helping radio stations, you know, for two decades now around the world uh, with their strategies, including your own. So yeah, you that. need to know what you need to know, right? I mean, the same goes with the production. You can't just transplant the jingle package from somewhere to somewhere thinking just because C100 in New York has it's going to work in, uh, in Tucson or like in San Diego, the same. So. Obviously, imaging, well, my role, same goes for Jingle. So I, I mean, obviously know a little bit about what you guys do with C90 and Magic. But I remember when I met you, Arda, and this is, I don't know, I think it's like almost 20 years. We're sitting in a steakhouse with Dave Dennis, which is not like existent anymore these days. You are like new in, in LA. Ollie and I were coming over from Germany and we chatted like about imaging. And I learned like... Uh, from you about the show i think you were doing slow jams like uh, on your own tap back then we were talking about imaging and we created the first jingles for for slow jams using like rb singers and stuff so you've always been imaging lovers so what role does audio imaging or branding play plays in the success of your syndicated shows but also like for for c90 and, and magic so yeah i mean look the first the, what, so what we use imaging for always is is to tell the story and that doesn't necessarily mean narration uh, it does sometimes um but again going back to the research and the overall strategy i, I want to first 
Well, I want to talk about our relationship with Benstown and some of the custom stuff you guys do for both Magic and Z90. Um, but I, I want to give a shout out to Ron Shapiro, who hopefully is still with us. I work with Ron in Los Angeles, and and uh, I was um, I went from Tucson to Los Angeles, which was very scary being a 30 year old. Uh, man, I was out of my element. And talk about imposter syndrome! Like, what am I doing in LA? Uh, boy, the first the first day in LA, I came home uh, to my apartment in uh, in Hollywood, and I curled up in a ball and got in the fetal position and I cried. I'm like, why did I take this gig? I'm so out of my element. <laughs> I, I'm glad I did though. And I, you know, of course I didn't, I didn't, I, I stuck with it. We had great success, but Ron Shapiro taught me the art of telling a story with music, uh, with specifically with, with songs. And one of my, uh, maybe pet peeve is the right word. And I'll just maybe just hopefully drop some gems on someone, maybe someone listening who doesn't do this yet. Um, I have a strong, hate's a strong word, but I can't stand generic beats. I cannot stand generic beats. I like custom stuff. So specifically, with, and I learned this from Ron Shapiro, specifically with Magic 92.5 and the way we work with Benstown um, is Benstown has so much custom music and, and particularly, um, shout out to Scott Maton, we use artists and we use lyrics to tell the story so um i mean the obviously the most common example that's been done forever since the 80s is using something like uh, the ojs for the love of money if you're doing a cash contest right so that's that's generic and that's been done but we do that with every single thing we do so every weekend we do every promotion we do uh scott scott maton from benstown knows hey he's not just going to use generic beats he's going to use lyrics and artists and songs to tell the story um you know the relationship we have with Benstown is it's not just, um, Hey, I'm going to send you guys a page of, uh, of imaging and just do it. It's an intimate relationship. So the folks at Benstown, including you, Andy, and, and our, our man, Scott Maiden, and even all the way up to Masa and Chachi, they know what our station's all about intimately. This is a, a relationship that's been cultivated over years. Um, so you guys aren't just a, just a contractor for us. You guys are a relationship that knows my radio station. So now I can send a piece, I can send some text to, to Benstown, and I don't even have to tell them the vibe I'm looking for. You guys know it and you nail it 100% of the time. And as a, you ask, hey, how do you do it without, you know, how do you even sleep? I do it because of working with people like the folks at Benstown here. I can tell you guys, hey, do this, go, and I can go to my next task. And two hours later, the imaging comes back and it's exactly how I envisioned in my head. That didn't happen overnight. It took a few months to, to develop that relationship, but Benstown is invested in my radio stations. And that is so important. We're not just a number for you guys at an imaging farm to turn and burn these things. You guys take time and you guys make it so special. Hope that answered the question. Yeah, thanks, man. I think Scott's doing a fantastic job. And I still, I still love the slow jam jingles we did like in 2000 eight or something with the talent. So I remember you hooking us up with LB Shore to sing the jingle. And till this day, and sorry for the sidebar, but art like you guys all know who MC Hammer is, right? I think also the international crowd crowd knows MC Hammer. So MC Hammer was kind of like a big star in Germany, far bigger than than in the US. And Arda basically when I met him first hooks me up with a phone number of MC Hammer to LB Shore. So we get like all drunk here in Germany with my friends. And I was like, dude, I got like MC Hammer's number. So we basically prank call MC Hammer like in the middle of the night, LA time, and like do like the hammer time. And he picks up the phone. <laughs> I don't know if you ever told you that story. Like that. <laughs> 27 so now, year old doesn't know what it, and, and he picks up the phone and like we're like, hey, have our time. I don't know if you find it funny, but doesn't well, like 27 I, year old I, still 30 year old fella. <laughs> I find it I find it hilarious and now I can never give you another celebrity's number ever. I know, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, was I love like, it. Yeah. Young and dumb, yeah. So, so oh, that's man. how long how long our dub uh, goes back with us and uh, yeah. That's pretty funny. It's crazy times. We have a few minutes left. If you have a question for R-Dub, please uh, type it in the chat box. Um, be great to hear from you. He's here to answer. We have a, a couple of quick questions here. One is we have Keith watching in Germany, and he's asking if you guys are geo-locked or if you can listen to Magic and Z in Germany, or does he need to use a VPN? You know, we we actually geo-locked recently, and that was a, that was a cost-cutting decision for our radio station. I have another question from Keith that I want to answer as well. Um, you know, the one great thing about our company, we're, we're live and local. We care about the community. Oh, 
I hear this from record people. You walk through our hallways in San Diego and people say, this is how radio used to be in the 90s. There's commotion, there's music, there's promo kids running up and down the halls. Um, our walls aren't, you know, the corporate colors. We have crap everywhere. It's an amazing place to work. Um, and I, I thank our ownership that during the pandemic, our number one goal besides staying afloat was to keep to, to keep the bodies and to not let people go. So we had to make decisions. Of course, one of the decisions was to geolock our websites. And I was in that meeting and I hated to, I hated knowing that even our neighbors 30 minutes away in, in uh, Mexico could not use the app anymore and could not stream us, but the alternative was cutting bodies. So we found, we found cost cutting ways that, that did not include cutting bodies. Keith also asked uh, the host of Hey Morton or Rick, Adina and D-Rock, who the heck is Morton? Such a great question. Um, Rick Morton is his full name. And they actually do, do a good job at resetting and explaining who the hosts are on pretty much every other break, which is so important to even establish show because you're always getting new listeners coming in. So great question. So, yeah, Rick Morton, Adina, and D-Rock are the cast of, of Hey Morton. So that's a, a great and, question. And VPN is the way to go. Like, if I'll listen to you guys, VPN is the way to go for C90 and Magic and a lot of other. I mean, you're not the only uh, guys who are doing the geo blocking. So a lot of the US stations you just can listen from here. I love um, with a VPN. I, I love Arturo's question. Can it can can I jump to Arturo? Yeah, of question? course. Because I believe in this so strongly. Um, Arturo asks, what are the advantages and disadvantages of syndication? My answer is my answer is simple for, for me and for what I'm allowed to do at our radio station and the and the budget we have, I've always believed in this. I believe you should bring in syndication when it is a show that you are unable to uh, duplicates the wrong word, but when it's a product that you're unable to um, uh, uh, produce in house uh, as good as the, the, this syndication show. So for example, um, and man, I hate, I hate to use slow jams in it as an example, but um, look, anyone can, if they have the budget can do a, a local slow jam show or, or a quiet storm. And if, and if you're, you know, if you're not doing it, you should. It's great. Um, in this case of slow jams, what you cannot, you, the way you cannot duplicate that locally, Arturo, is um, in, in the case of slow jams, it's actually an advantage to be on in different cities. Because take, for example, we're on in Los Angeles. Well, people in Los Angeles have family in Tucson, Arizona, and, and San Francisco, and Fresno, California, and San Diego. So this show uh, allows people to call in and make dedications to their loved ones in other cities uh, who are listening to the same show. So it would be almost impossible to duplicate that on a local level. Um, going back to morning shows, you know, unfortunately you may not have a six figure, in some cases a seven figure budget to bring on a huge major market morning show. Um, so again, this is the advantage of, of syndication. You're able to have someone like, like Hey Morton, where you would normally not be able to afford to install a Hey Morton in maybe a, a, a market like Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm a huge proponent of local radio uh, because I'm a local program director and a local jock in the afternoon. So I always say, if you can do it locally just as good, you should do that first. You should absolutely do that first. And I really wish we, we all had the budgets we had in the 90s and, and previous. If you cannot if you don't have the means for that quality of show, uh, I believe that's where you should look for syndication. I f finally, I, I believe that syndication is best as a compliment for a radio station. I mean, going back to the nineties when, when love line was really successful at its, at its peak, that was a great show to add to a locally programmed alternative station. By the way, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, expert at all in that format, but I do remember my local alternative station was local all day, the local morning show. But then at 10 o'clock, they had Loveline. They could not duplicate. I know that in Tucson, Arizona, they could mm -hmm. not duplicate Loveline on a local level. So they brought in syndication to complement their, their local programming. Well, our dub, so nice to have you here today. Your energy, passion, Absolutely. and creativity is, is contagious and inspiring. And, and I wanted to say congratulations on all you've achieved thus far. Programming two tremendous radio stations in San Diego the success with slow jams. Uh, and while you're doing all this, you've managed to travel to 193 countries in the world, every single one of them. And, and now with your micro nation, <laughs> and how that's exploded internationally. Uh, I just don't know where you find the time, but,
But um, as he, as he, I guess he just walked off the set and it's a slow jam. I said, oh, I got it. Wow, I got it. Just give me a little of this. I mean, there you go. It's not the jacket, which is very uncomfortable, but I have medals and I have the sash. I didn't want to put, I have to put that on this afternoon for TV. So I wanted to be comfy today. But yeah. Viva Slow Jamistan. You guys are amazing at what you do. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I tell you, one thing that I wanted to say just the end here that really impressed me most, uh, you have no fear. You will go anywhere, whether it's to North Korea or Syria or Iraq, Iran, wherever. You took your Slow Jam show to Shark Tank to sit in the tank to see what they would say. And we'll save that for another day. Um, and then, you know, Epic 48. I mean, the things you guys coordinated, uh, most people would be difficult to do one of those things. And yet you're putting together a 48 hour package. That's just mind blowing. So, um, I mean, just so impressed with, with what you've done and what you achieved. And it's been a privilege to work with you for, uh, I don't know how many years now, but quite a lot. Um, and thanks for being on today. Absolutely guys, th done. thanks so much. By the way, I see more questions and we're out of time. So, yes, you can get in touch with me. Keith, thanks for your question. Uh, shoot me an email uh, or DM and I'd be glad to answer any of you. These are great questions coming in. So um, I, I pride myself on responding to everybody. Um, you know, when I was a kid and I used to uh, email program directors and ask for for station tours, often I was ignored and I said, I will never be that PD. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, please email and, and DM me. If I don't respond, that means I didn't get it. So, um, yeah, uh, hit me up and we'll talk. Well, thanks again, Doug. Yeah. Also want to say thanks, thanks to Robbie, you. our producer, who makes this all happen behind the scenes. A video of today's webinar will be posted tomorrow at the P1 Media Group website, Benstown. Our YouTube channel, social channels, you can find it anywhere in case you want to watch it again or share it. And you can see the entire series anytime at any of those locations. Now, we're going to take July and August off. We're back in September with AI Ashley, the world's first AI DJ, also making a lot of noise the last few weeks. And we'll talk with two of the key guys behind creating AI Ashley. And it's only been a couple weeks now that it's hit the radio in Portland on Live 95.5 doing the midday shift. But uh, we'll find out the good, the bad, the ugly about AI Ashley on our next webinar in September. It will happen on a Thursday. We'll get the date to you guys soon. And we look forward to seeing you back. Have a great summer. And thanks for watching. All right, Al. Thanks for joining, man. Phenomenal. Had a great Thank time. You guys have a great week. Take care. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye, guys.